Christmas had always been Elizabeth McLaw's special time of the year. Her tiny cabin, perched on a hill in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, was a world away from Bethlehem of Judea. And this year, 1848, was far removed from that first Christmas hundreds of years ago. But as she cuddled her newborn son, born on Christmas Eve, she imagined she knew a little of how Mary must have felt. Long ago. 
God's day. He arose on Easter day. Now he lives for you and me. Sleep, baby, sleep. Close your eyes and sleep. Sleep, sleep. Close your eyes. As she gazed into the flickering fire on the hearth, her thoughts drifted to her husband, who would never know his own son. He had been a fine, hard-working man. He had hopes of becoming a doctor, until the money ran out. Disappointed, he worked as a farmer until his patience ran out. Drinking brought a change in him. Elizabeth had often been the object of his anger as he returned home drunk. He must not have been able to stand the thought of another spring planting. She wasn't sure if it was the farm or her that reminded him of his failures. Whatever the cause, he was gone. He joined the army and went out west to fight the Indians. In the letter she had received, they said he had died as a brave soldier should. They said she should receive a little money from time to time. But that was months ago. Elizabeth thought she'd never know happiness again. Till now. Again, she studied the little infant in her arms. Manuel Christmas McClaw. That's your name. Who'd ever thought a little fellow like you would have such a big name? Now, I know you're not the same as Jesus, but my God will be with you too. Maybe he sent some angels to sing for you. Let's listen. Can you hear them? Do you know what they're saying? Glory to God. 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 Christmas McClaw. He became known simply as Manny. He went from being a little baby to a little boy, to a little man in just a few years. He had to. He was the man of the house, and he was serious about his position. Wherever <laughs> Manny was, there was music. He was always singing, humming, or whistling. Old Mr. Thomas up the road gave him a mouth organ. His little odd, off-key concerts got better with hours of practice. The quiet, cold winter evenings heard many rich and sad melodies from the harmonica of Emmanuel Christmas. 
1861 brought the dark clouds of war to Virginia. The call to defend the state from northern invaders was the only thing that could be talked about. A new company of Virginia volunteers was being formed. They set up camp less than two miles from the McClaw cabin during the summer of 1862. Manny would fly through his chores and run to Mr. Mahoney's farm to drink in the excitement of the endless drills and marches. Around the campfire at night, the mellow harmonica of Emanuel McClaw made the men of the Virginia Volunteers dream of home and loved ones left behind. He became a favorite of the soldiers. It was Captain Claremont himself who suggested that Manny become the drummer boy. Emanuel's mind burned with the excitement of marching with the army. The men liked him. He could certainly master the drum, and he could be a brave soldier like his father. But the thought of his mother, all alone, brought him back to reality. Would she understand why he had to go? He is King, He is King, Jesus Christ is King of Kings, and His power shall reign forever and ever. is King of Kings, and His power shall reign forevermore. Hallelujah, hallelujah to our King, King of Kings. Hallelujah, hallelujah to our King. He is King, He is King, Jesus Christ is King of Kings, and His power shall reign forevermore. says nothing's gonna happen. The Federals are across the river, waiting for winter. All we're supposed to do is watch them till cold weather sets in. You mean you'd serve under <coughs> General Jackson? Yes, ma'am. He's a Christian, like you and me, Mama. He, he lives by the New Testament and fights by the Old. Some say he prays during the hottest battles with bullets flying all around him. General Jackson says he's as safe on the battlefield as he is in his parlor, as long as God wants him on the earth. Oh, please, Mama, let me go. You remember, I lost your father when he went into the army. Why, those engines killed him before he even knew I was expected. General Jackson never loses any men. Fact is, they say he was against a few from the other side. Emmanuel, 14 years ago, I was all alone in this whole world until God gave me a very special Christmas gift. I named that gift Emmanuel. Son, don't you know what your name means? Of course, Mama. You tell me all the time. Emmanuel means God with us. Wait, Mama, doesn't that mean that God is with me, as he is with General Jackson? Why, I'm as poor as the general to Jesus, ain't I, Mama? Emmanuel Christmas, you are a rascal. Yes, ma'am. Well, you will be hungry for the birthdays, right? The birthdays? Yeah, you and Jesus's. Son, you have to promise me that you'll spend Christmas at home. Son, you have to be here for Christmas. I'll spend Christmas at home, Mama, I promise. Besides, there ain't going to be no fighting. 
and I wouldn't miss Christmas at home for anything. How I long for home at Christmas Though I'm so far away All my thoughts turn home at Christmas Wishing for yesterday Christmas at home, Christmas at home Lord, how I want to go home My heart's yearning so For I've longed to go home At Christmas time Christmas time, Christmas time Christmas time, Christmas time Memories fill my heart and Christmas fighting, serious fighting, desperate fighting. It took place near the little town of Fredericksburg in Virginia. December came. Winter should have halted the armies, yet General Burnside sent his army of 150,000 over the Rappahannock River to face the well-entrenched Confederates. Ordered to support General Longstreet's Corps, the small company of Virginia volunteers awaited the outcome of the fierce battle. Before the battle was ended, over 18,000 Americans both blue and gray, became casualties on December 13th, 1862. 10-year-old ah! drummer boy from Berryville, Virginia. Emmanuel Christmas McClaw was running ammunition to the embattled defenders of the famous Stone Wall when he was shot through the leg. The grizzled soldiers had earlier been inspired by the young boy's bravery. They were soon shocked to see the mangled drummer boy grimacing in pain with death all around him. Darkness finally put an end to the fighting, but not the suffering. Manny was barely aware of the doctor, smelling of sweat, powder, and liquor bending over him. Boy! Boy, can you hear me? I can't. I can't be the charge, sir. My drum, it's broken. I can't be the charge. It's okay, boy. Save your strength. I've got to move you away from here. You're, you're a doctor? Yeah, I'm a doctor. Now hush. Then it's over. Yeah, it's over. It's over for a lot of men. My leg, doctor. It hurts so bad. Can you make me better, doctor? My, Come my... here. Just put your arms around my neck. We've got to move you out of here. No, sir. You'll get all bloody. Boy, do as I say. It didn't look good for the boy. The mangled leg would have to be amputated. 
And even that would be little help against the gangrene he knew would set in before long. In anger, he cursed when he found there was no chloroform for anesthesia. A drink from his bottle braced him for the task ahead. Son? Doctor? There's no way around it. You're going to lose this leg. Now, doctor? Yes, now, boy. We have no time to lose. Uh, boy, I don't have any more chloroform to help with the pain. I have nothing. Here, take a drink of this. It'll help. Just drink it. Come on. No, sir. My mama made me promise never to drink. Boy, your mama don't know war. Now drink it. I'll be fine without it, doctor. It's gonna hurt even more than you could even imagine, son. My Lord will be with me now, doctor. Huh. <laughs> Religious, huh? Jesus is my savior, if that's what you mean, doctor. Boy, you believe anything you want to believe. Anything at all. It's almost Christmas, sir. Do you know who was born on Christmas? Well, I don't, I don't know, boy. It was Jesus. He's called Emmanuel in the Bible. It means God with us. God is with us both right now, Doctor. I've been praying for you. Boy, don't pray for me. Pray for yourself. <laughs> I'm way past your Lord's help. Oh, no, sir. Nurse, nurse, get some men in here. I need someone to help hold this boy down for an amputation. My God will be with me now, Doctor. You won't need anyone to hold me down. <laughs> your God may very well be with you, boy. But he better be a whole lot stronger than I think he is to get you through this one. Fifteen minutes. It took fifteen minutes as fast as the hardened doctor could work. Fifteen minutes that must have seemed like an eternity to the boy. Over and over, the boy prayed. Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, God be with us. Oh, Emmanuel, God be with us. No one knew the doctor. Not really, except by reputation. It was said he had no heart. They said he had liquor for blood. But he shook uncontrollably as he finished this operation. Drenched with sweat, he hurried from the hospital tent, hurrying to his own tent, hurrying to the darkness, hurrying to his bottle. He tried to sleep amid the moans of the dying, but his mind was filled with a boy who wanted to spend Christmas at home. The boy's voice echoed in his brain, Emmanuel. God with us. Emmanuel, God be with us. Treasures bring the mud. 
Christmas McClaw, the Christmas boy, was not getting any better. The doctor felt helpless against his weakening condition. Special medicines were secured. They had little effect. The boy developed pneumonia. The embittered doctor resented the fact that he wished this boy to live. More than anything, he wished him to live. He found himself checking in repeatedly. Doctor, is that you? Yeah, it's the boy. I mean, don't, it's, it's, don't try to talk now, okay, boy? I have to, doctor. You see, I'm going home soon. <laughs> boy, you're not going any t home anytime soon. With this leg, it's going to be several more months before you're strong enough to get out of here. Heaven will be my Christmas home, doctor. Nonsense, boy. Come on. You're going to be just fine. It's okay, boy. You'll be just fine. Boy, I don't know here. We've got a lot. We got a lot to do. You're gonna be just fine. There's no. There's no sense of talking about going home for Christmas or anything like that to heaven. You're gonna be just fine, boy. I have to, Doctor. The Lord told me that I would. That I would see him in heaven. You don't know him, do you, Doctor? Who? Your Lord? Yes, sir. When you were operating on me, I asked Jesus to save your soul. Boy, I told you, it's too late for that. Oh no, sir. Boy, you don't know half the things I've done in my life. I may not. But God does. That's why he sent his son, to die for those sins. The Lord has told me that I would see you in heaven. Boy, stop the foolish talking, okay? <laughs> why are you crying? My mama, she'll miss me, doctor. Will you give me, will you give her my Bible? It's here, under, under the bed. Boy, just lay back and take, take it easy. I'm okay. Only, I, I can't breathe so good. Doctor, what's that bright light? What light, boy? There. No, no, it's not a light. It's Jesus. Don't you see him, sir? They're singing for him. I'm coming home, Jesus. I'm coming home. Boy. Ask me not, O oh gentle Savior, my humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me by Savior Savior hear my God, I want what this boy had. God, I've rejected you for so long, God. I didn't even believe in you existed. But now, I believe. God, I do believe. I ask you to 
Save me from my wicked sins, God, and save my soul. Virginia gave the doctor plenty of time to think. He fingered the small Bible in his pocket to see if it was still there to convince himself that the events of the past few days were real. For the hundredth time he read the inscription, to Emmanuel C. McClaw from Elizabeth Frederick McClaw. Even as the wagon jostled over the frozen Virginia roads, he thought of his wife and of home. He prayed his letter would reach her before he arrived. My dearest Elizabeth, I hardly know where to begin. I guess I should start by confessing that the letter you received 14 years ago was forged. No, I wasn't killed in battle. I just wanted you to be free from the likes of me. I've always loved you. I'm sure by now you've heard about Manny. You'd have been proud, Elizabeth. Hundreds of men died in my care, but Manny was different. During the worst of his suffering, he was more concerned about me than himself. Even when he was dying, he was telling me about his Emmanuel. Oh, Elizabeth, I'm so sorry. If you can find it in your heart to forgive, I'd like to spend Christmas at home. You see, Manny's God is now my God. I was shown the way home by my own son. With all my love, Nathan Anderson McClaw. Christmas at home, Christmas at home, Lord, how I want to go. to go. 